Coach at Western Carolina wanted to walk uh, through that one just a little bit. Uh, the uh, the club comes out in Cullowee on a gorgeous day and uh, comes out in your very opening drive. Had it all the way to the 29. Looked yeah. like on that first uh, series of the of the football game, you were uh, you were destined to score. Yeah, you know we. I thought, I thought we were in great shape right there. We were moving the ball very effectively. Uh, and then, uh, you know, Aaron got uh, his ankle tweaked a little bit, had to put in Dominique, uh, Dominique Allen. But not, you know, Dominique responded and did just fine. And, uh, and really had a play that I thought was going to uh, pop out of there from Tyler Renew. And, and uh, you know, the Western defender just got his arm in there and, and uh, got the ball poked out and, and uh, kind of killed that drive there uh, at the beginning. But really, you know, it, it kind of – kind of the way it went all day uh, Saturday that you know we moved the ball effectively and we just uh, weren't able to finish enough drives uh, you know to give us a chance to win the ball game there so when I'm up in the broadcast booth and Aaron is injured I know yeah. how I felt I yeah. can only imagine how you felt I, I know that my heart kind of skipped a beat there and I thought my mind started flashing forward to uh well, it's early in the ball game to be yeah. going without a guy like that. I certainly right. hope that it's not a not a significant sort of thing, and obviously it wasn't. Well, and he's such a tough competitor. That's the the thing that startles you is because he never misses a snap in practice, never misses you know a snap in a ball game, and and you know he's been dinged up at various times this year, and he just plays through it. And so to see him actually come out of the game, you know, I think kind of uh, you know shocked everybody a little bit. But you know, Dominique is is very effective, and he's really been improving more and more and more. Uh, you know, and so, uh, you know, it's not like, you know, we can't function with him in there because he's very, very uh, capable. So, but uh, obviously you want your senior signal caller out there. And this is something that came up with, uh, with me and Brent Thompson a couple of weeks ago. I got curious and I, I, I was asking him questions about the type of tempo you try to set in yeah. practice. And he talked about how you run over 100 plays pretty yeah. much every day. Sure. Uh, in practice, and your ones are getting a game's worth about every day right. in practice, but your twos are getting a lot of work too. Yeah. So, uh, you know, if, if anyone's curious about, well, how much work does this young man, Dominique Allen, get, there's the answer to that. Yeah, and, it, you know, on both, both ends, the, the, the big thing is we try to get as much volume as we can in practice, and you, you correct a lot of the mistakes in the film room, but uh, you, you got you to gotta make sure that your, your next guy is always ready. And, you know, just like with uh, Rock Muhammad a couple of weeks ago, and and uh, he goes down in the in the uh, in the Chattanooga game, and you know you got to have the next guy prepared to go in there and play, and and you can't have a drop off. So you've got to you got to make sure you do a good job coaching those those guys also. Style, selection, service. Quality. Value. See what everyone is talking about. Ashley Furniture Home Store. Um, they're a very, very good football team now. And it's really, I've been surprised that, uh, you know, they're, they're in the third year of existence. So most of their kids are, you know, the, the age of a Mitchell Jeter or a Nick Willis or somebody like that. Uh, and the thing that sticks out uh, to us is what great team speed they have. You know, you look at them on offense, and uh, quarterback John Russ is the, uh, I think, the, the highest rated passer in our league, second, second highest yardage throwing the football. He's also their second leading rusher. And then Alex Lakes, the, uh, the big tailback, I think, uh, I don't know what his stats are, but, you know, he's having a great year. Uh, on the ground there, I think just under uh, a thousand yards rushing on the season so far, and then uh, T. Mitchell is the other tailback, is a, a speed guy, changeup guy. So you got a big, strong runner in Alex Lakes, and then T. Mitchell, you know, more of a speed guy right there. And then you look at the receiving core; they have a, a J.T. Palmer's a, a, a bigger guy, kind of like an Alex Glover, Rudder Brown type of receiver, and then uh, Chandler Curtis. Uh, is is their, their their speed guy game breaker kind of deal who's got four kick returns for touchdowns on the year uh you know 20 catches you know doing a good job averaging over 20 yards a catch uh so they're a very explosive offense and very explosive on special teams because of all that speed i don't want to say chandler curtis's name once on special teams on saturday uh, three punt returns for a touchdown one kickoff return for a touchdown and has another one that was called back so uh, the one that was really impressive was uh, the one against Samford on the last uh, their last score. There's about three minutes to go in the ball game, 
And uh, he takes one 99 yards against, uh, against Sanford, who is a very athletic football team. So uh, pretty impressive return right there. So this is Mercer's uh, second go. Well, it's not the second go around. They, they have had a lot of gaps in their program over the years. Right. But they are finally back. This is a uh, this is a club that went away for a significant period of time, uh, and they uh, it's the, it's actually their 41st season of football. But they did not have a team from 1942 to 2012. Their football roots actually go back as far as 1892. But this is their second year of competing. Last year they were in the Pioneer League, right. which is a non scholarship league. And then this year they are in the uh, they are in the Southern Conference. The two teams, the uh, the Citadel and Mercer, have not played since 1931. I really hope that 1931 loss doesn't stick around. <laughs> you know, I hope we're over that by now. You know. Yeah, so. yeah. So, uh, <laughs> but you know, Bobby Lamb, who the uh, the longtime Furman coach, is their head coach, and 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 he's put together a veteran staff, and you know, the the school has pumped a ton of money into the program. They have fantastic facilities. Uh, and they've really done a good job right there because they're they're in the hotbed of of, uh, of talent there in the Georgia area, just outside of Atlanta, uh, an area that we recruit very heavily. Uh, you know, we got a couple of coaches going out early uh, to go around and, and visit some of our recruits and uh, high schools in that area uh, on our way down. So uh, you know, there it does not surprise me that they, they they have that kind of speed and talent being being located where they are. Now let me throw this out there, that just in the in, in in the character of devil's advocate here, because I've looked at this club a little bit and I noticed that okay, they were in the Pioneer League last year, so no scholarships. This year, right. 38. To next year, 50. The next year after that, 63. How can a team that has just 38 scholarships be so tough? They're a private institution, and I just, I don't know if, I don't know exactly how they're doing it, but uh, I know at Lenore Ryan, uh, you were able to split those scholarships and package things using academic money, using uh, using uh, aid money, uh, different Pell grants and things like that, mm -hmm. and uh, you know so you can package up kids pretty good, uh, pretty good at a private institution. Well, this year. Charleston Crab House has been serving locals and visitors alike for the last 20 years. We have our crispy whole flounder. We have the seared ahi tuna. You name it, in the seafood business, we have it. Be sure to stop by the Tiger and Leaf Lounge whenever you visit our location. We have many frozen and specialty drinks, awesome margaritas. One of my favorites is the Wapu Punch. If you don't like it down in the historic district, come over to James Island, sit on the Intercoastal Waterway. It is an unbelievable view where it's southern seafood at sensible prices and a darn good time. You know, putting in that perspective, those are kids that are the same age as a Mitchell Jeter or a Nick Willis or, or some of those guys like that. So uh, they're older than they may appear to be. Uh, and, you know, they've been able to sprinkle in a few transfers here and there that have, uh, have boosted their, uh, their roster. But, uh, you know, they're much more veteran than most people uh, anticipate them to be, which is why they're playing everybody so well and, you know, been, and, and had some great wins. Uh, and nearly pulled off two big, big uh, wins over Sanford and Chattanooga. This is uh, Bobby Lamb's second season at Mercer since they revived the football program, but he's no stranger to the Southern Conference, as we've alluded to. He is a uh, 1987 graduate of Furman. A well, quarterback there was the 1985 Southern Conference Football Player of the Year, the 2004 Southern Conference Coach of the Year, was their head coach for nine seasons, was uh, an assistant there for 16, so he spent a significant amount of his time there. He's 15-6 and six in his second season at Mercer, 82-46 and 46 in his 12th season as a head coach, and has 72 Southern Conference wins, which is fifth most in league history. He sports a 6-3 and three record against the Citadel from his time at Furman. He's got a quarterback who's very efficient, it only stands to reason that uh, that he's had a hand in that. I would, I would think. Say, I would say so. You know, he he did a great job with the offense there at Furman, and I had uh, had three three uh, kids that played for me in high school that went on and played for him there. Uh, one of them was the starting tailback. Another one played fullback for him there. And uh, you know, he's transitioned a little bit offensively from he was he was always a two back uh, uh, downhill run game, you know, sp sprint draw and uh, drop back passing game. Uh, and so he's transitioned a little bit to the spread offense now. So, uh, you know, he has adapted from his time at Furman.
I think uh, at linebacker, obviously, with uh, Carl Robinson and Tevin Floyd and James Riley and Carson Smith, those four guys, uh, we feel very comfortable with any of them in there in the in the lineup. And uh, and really, Carson, at you know the last you know he missed uh, missed most of the Charlotte game, but you know before that uh, had been playing very very well. Uh, so really, we feel like we have. You know, great depth there at that position, and good competition, which is which is great. And uh, at receiver, we have good competition. Uh, on the offensive line, we have good competition. So there's you know lots of places uh, across the board where we have guys competing very very hard. With linebackers, uh, Carson Smith made a hit in last week's game that hurt me. That yeah, was, it was good to see. wicked. It was good to see. And it was, I was glad he was out there. I'm I'm really. Uh, you know, excited to see the Southern Conference uh, uh, FARs make that decision, allowing him to play Saturday. And Mark Spear said something to me before the ball game that, you know, even though he had to play play against him, you know, he was he was really glad that, that decision was made because it was the right decision. But uh, it was great to have Carson out there Saturday. And then on the wide receiver uh, side of the ball, uh, Alex Glover made a just a phenomenal oh, great, catch. Great catch down the sideline. Great body control. Uh, you know. One-handed, uh, grabbed it out of the air and came down with it in a big part of the ball game. So, uh, you know, great play by him. And, I, you know, sometimes I get games smeared, but it seemed like Cam Jackson had a really nice catch on a, a sideline far from you, kind of going right to left on the field, out of bounds perhaps, I think, and maybe in that particular game. I hope I'm not mixing it up with another one. Yeah, there, and you, but. You know, or maybe you might be thinking of the one to Brandon Eakins over on that sideline. It was. Uh, it was you know, where where we thought we had uh, thought we had the completion there yes. and just uh, just lost it. Rise, he was going out of bounds. So a uh, good play by the Western Carolina defender. I was thinking because that's about the same place where Cam was injured in right. the ball game. Yeah. So that's yep, that's that's what happened. Yeah. Yep. So that makes uh, some good sense. But uh, linebacker, uh, uh, wide receiver, it seems like on that D line on your depth chart at least every week you've got an either or with crochet and thomas yeah. and so that seems like another yep. place perhaps. yeah we, and we really feel like we've got two starters there and and uh it's been a good competition there between both those guys they both have started games uh throughout the season so it kind of goes back and forth but they're they're a good one-two punch right there but we play a lot of we play a lot of bodies on that defensive front to try to stay as fresh as we can i'll go back to that be back position just a little bit here and ask you uh how uh, how close is Isaiah Smith to being able to jump in the starting lineup? Very. I mean, I I feel like he is he has played very well for a freshman. I know he had, you know, the fumble against Charleston Southern and the fumble Saturday against Western Carolina that uh, that uh, you know sometimes you have to I'm not going to say live with, but you got to know that those things are going to happen with those young kids. Uh, but he is really playing well. He graded out. Other than that play, he graded out very well Saturday. He blocked well. Uh, and so I think he is just going to be a very good player for us for a, for a long time to come. You brought up the uh, – and, and you did so in last week's show too when we were talking about Carson being uh, reinstated. Right. That it was a rule you'd like to see changed. And so that yeah. made me think what other kind of rules, maybe just in college football, if you could change one, is there one that particularly bothers you or is harder to – Understand or factor in because it's so new, perhaps. Well, I don't. I don't love the targeting call, uh, and I, I know that's that's one that's you know a, a hot topic with uh, the concussion deal and all that stuff. But uh, I think that really, if you're going to put the death penalty on a player, you're going to eject the player from that game in the Southern Conference to two-game suspension. Then you need to make sure you've got video review capabilities at the site, which we don't have in the Southern Conference. Uh, and I've, you know, I experienced it last year. We had two targeting calls at Lenore Ryan last year. One of them got overturned uh, during the week, the next week, because it was an incorrect call. Uh, the other one was a bang bang play on a post right over the middle that I don't know what you tell a, a defensive player at that point. You know, I don't, don't go for the ball, don't try to break it up, you know. So uh, I just think that's a, that's a tough, a tough call right there. So. Since 2002, the lottery has helped award more than one million scholarships. So when you play, you're not just taking a chance. You're also giving one. <laughs>